Come on, put that away. You're wasting chess time. Chess time. Dear friends, welcome once again to this chess video and once again we will test our positional understanding. I'll go through the moves very quickly and it's a king pawn game this time. We have e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6 and we go into the four knights variation. And this move, bishop to b5, I think is termed the Spanish variation of the four knights. But bishop to b4 double zeros, double zeros, and white chops this knight here on c6. Black recaptures with the d-pawn. We have d3. Bishop drops back, bishop to g5. h6, bishop drops back. And here, very interestingly, black plays the move c5, giving white, of course, access to the d5 square. We have knight d5, g5, knight takes on f6, queen takes on f6, and bishop to g3. And this is the position I'd like us to consider, my friends. And once again, I'll give you three scenarios. The first scenario is to try and open up the position and take advantage of these two bishops here. So you plan bishop to e6, rook a to d8, and the manoeuvre c4, opening up this diagonal here for your dark square bishop and giving the position a much more dynamic feel. So this is plan A. Let me just put that back. Plan B is you think that the position here in the centre is closed and therefore it'd be easy to engineer a pawn storm against the white castle position. So you plan a move like bishop to g4 and in the likelihood that white will play h3 you plan on bringing the bishop back to e6 playing king to h7 rook to g8 and g5 now that you have created this break point in the white castle position. So this is plan B, trying to take advantage of the appearance of this closed position in the center and pawn storming the white castle position. And plan C again is playing a move like bishop to g4, but in this instance, you will chop the knight here on f3. Because you think that black's advantage lies in the poor placement of this bishop here on g3, which is essentially entombed within this pawn chain. So this is plan C. So please pause the video, my chess friends, have a think about the position and try and formulate in your own mind what is the correct um, positional idea. The game itself was played in London. No, sorry, just outside of London, in a place called Hastings. And with the white pieces is a chess player called uh, William Winter, who was quite a character. He won the British Championship twice, and he beat such notable players as Richard Retty, 
Aaron Nimzovich, and he even beat Sultan Khan himself. But he's one of the few British champions to actually have been put in jail. And he was put in jail for, in fact, sedition for preaching communism way back in 1921 for six months. But he's a very, very strong chess player. Um, with the black pieces is José Raúl Capablanca, Cuban chess legend. And in this position, Capablanca chose the move bishop to g4. And his idea is to play against this poorly placed bishop here on g3, which is entombed in its own pawns. Let us see why opening up the position with a move like bishop to e6 and planning rook a to d8 and c4 doesn't work. If we, gov- if we just give black, sorry white rather, a nothing move like h1 and we allow the rook to come to d8 and again if we give white a nothing move and we play the move c4, well, white can simply undermine the e5 point with d4. And this bishop, which was once entombed in its own pawn chain, now lives. So even despite the fact that you had two bishops, because of this pawn thrust g5 in the position of the king here, it's a very precarious thing to do to open up the position. Because these lines and diagonals that will be created your opponent can also utilise. So, trying to open up the position and take advantage of two bishops is a very, very risky proposition. What about trying to pawnstorm the white king position because we feel that the position here in the centre is locked? If white plays the plausible h3 and we come back to e6, white can simply play a beautiful defensive move like knight to h2 and we have blockaded both the h and the g pawns. If black insists by playing king to h7, planning rook to g8 and g5, well, we can simply play knight to g4. If the bishop chops knight, we can simply take with the h-pawn and again we have a blockade on these light squares and these pawns are essentially going nowhere. If instead the queen moves, well again we can play something like knight to e3 and we're blockading the light squares. And if you try something as suicidal as f5, well you're certainly just asking for it. Because... Once the position opens up, your king here is in a very precarious position. This bishop is alive and white can simply play something like c3, d4, open up the centre and your king here is looking very, very airy indeed. In the actual game, Capablanca played bishop to g4 simplifying the position and after h3 he took on g3 chopping the knight queen recaptured and we have an exchange of queens here and here Capablanca played the beautiful quiet move f6 preventing of course the move h5 sorry h4 and trying to free this bishop here, which is entombed in this pawn chain. Well, white really needs to do something. And he played king to g2 with the idea of bringing the rook here to the h-file and trying to push through h4. Capablanca played a5, a4, trying to block up the queen side. Knight to f7, king to h1. The idea, of course, is to open up the h-file. e6, h4. Capablanca simply ignores this and plays rook f to b8. 
takes and takes and b3. We add c6 and notice how Capablanca is essentially playing with an extra piece on the queen side because this bishop here is still entombed. And as soon as he gets to engineer the move c4, well, this bishop will be free. Here, White, in fact, played the very interesting rook to a2. If he tries something like c4, trying to entomb this bishop like its counterpart here, it simply fails to a move like b5. If we have the plausible rook to b1, well, black is simply able to double quickly on the b file and is able to open up the position and will probably be able to penetrate along the third rank. So instead of c4, we had rook to a2. Capablanca played b5. We have doubling rooks on the a file and c4. Releasing this bishop eventually. We have a takes b, c takes b, c takes and rook takes on b5. Rook a4, rook takes b3, d4, rook comes back to b5, and rook to c4. Notice how a move like d takes e5 simply fails to f takes e5. And this little bird here is still entombed in its cage. So I'd rook to c4 instead. Rook to b4, and after rook takes c6, rook takes d4. Black has this outside pass pawn, an extra piece on the queen side, and white, in fact, resigned. So if we can just go way back to this position here, the correct plan, of course, was to play against the poor position of this bishop here on g3, entombed within this pawn chain here. Black essentially playing with an extra piece on the queen side. Simplifying the position, of course, with an exchange of queens here on f3. So if you manage to get that, my chess friends, very, very well done. I think it's a very, very helpful exercise for us personally to go through these types of exercises. Because in chess, it's always good to think in general terms like uh, attacking on the queen side or keeping the centre closed and attacking on the wing or simplifying into an endgame. And subjecting these ideas to falsification to find out whether they can be verified or not. And this should lead us usually to the correct uh, positional ideas and strategic and tactical plans. So anyway, I thank you once again, my chess friends, for taking the time to watch this chess video. And I sincerely wish you well with your own chess. Take care and goodbye. <laughs>